much of the information. All right, well, welcome. This is our March 14th um, principal Zoom, and we've just got a couple topics. But of course, if you have other topics, we'll have um, time to discuss those too. All right, a um, couple things I want to share. So um, after we had um, Beth Scott come for a couple days and share to principals her putting out fires in lead, I did a survey. And with the principal survey, I just asked a couple questions. The first couple I'll be able to put in our grant um, that just the success of it. Um, but what I really wanted to focus on is like next year, continuing the principal Zooms. Um, it looked like for the most part, people thought that that was good to continue them. And then some of the questions that I had asked, and I put those here a little bit easier to read, um, topics that came up that maybe you would like us to cover in principal Zoom. And those are here. And we'll sit down as a, you know, kind of a staff and look at those and see how we can support you. And then I had asked if we could do anything, um, what would be the best way to support you? And I had some ideas or you could put your own in. And principal rounds or facilitated principals rounds came up a few times along with principal coaching. And so we know that there's a couple other ESUs doing some of the facilitated um, principal rounds. So Claire has looked into that and I'm going to stop sharing. And I think she's got some information to um, not a new share. That's where this is the first time on my first time on Zoom. Um, she's got some information that she's going to share about facilitated principal rounds and see if that's something we would like to um, try and do here at ESU 8. So I will let Claire talk about that. Okay, perfect. Can everyone hear me and see my screen, Molly? Okay, so um, I was fortunate. I went out to um, ESU 10 and to St. Paul and watched how they did a leadership walk with three a tri as a triad a couple of weeks ago. And so we, a lot of great things came from that day. And so this is something we're looking into trying if we can get um, some buy-in from your end. And if any of you are interested, I'm going to start with a little video. Hopefully this shows just explaining what it is and some, um, again, this is coming from ESU 10 who has done this for a couple of years. And so this just gives some general background knowledge of what it is and what principals have to say about it. And then I'll, we can go into a little bit more about what it would look at at ESU 8. Let me know if you can't hear it. Welcome to the ESU 10 Leadership Network. There are four Leadership Network triads participating in the network this year. Each triad consists of three school principals and two ESU 10 staff. Network participants attended two days of initial training facilitated by Dr. David Lorden, former principal, superintendent, and current educational administration faculty at San Diego State University. After attending training in August of 2021, leadership network triads have transitioned to participating in learning walks on site at school districts. Each triad administrator developed a problem statement and problem of practice that they are investigating and taking action on in their school district. During learning walks, the host principal defines their problem of practice and provides guiding questions for the triad to focus on while visiting the school. Triad participants observe classrooms looking for evidence centered around the principal's guiding questions. After classroom observations are complete, the triad reconvenes to discuss strengths and observe patterns and trends related to the problem of practice. The team provides feedback and helps the host principal develop high leverage leadership actions to implement. Feedback from triad administrators and ESU 10 staff indicate that the leadership network has been a great opportunity for professional growth throughout the year. Let's hear some feedback directly from these administrators. I decided to join the leadership network because I was looking for a way to collaborate with other administrators. When I first started teaching in OPS, I had a ton of other sixth grade teachers that I was able to bounce ideas off of. And when I moved out to Western Nebraska, I felt like I was on an island because I was at a small school. I was the only sixth grade teacher and I was always trying to find other people who I could collaborate with. 
And it was the same thing when I became an administrator. So I had asked the ESU about getting emails for other principals in the areas and just ways to reach out with others. And finally, this opportunity came about and I thought, well, this is exactly what I was looking for, a way to really get to know some other administrators and be able to bounce ideas and collaborate. And I feel like um, our triad has done just that. I have a group of um, administrators and ESU personnel that I really feel like have helped me grow and I could call at any given time to bounce ideas off of or um, get advice. By participating in this leadership network has really opened a door for myself to grow as a professional, but it's also impacted my staff in a positive way by establishing some dialogue that really needed to happen and bringing forth some questions that needed, needed to be discussed. Um, and these things were just, they just weren't happening naturally. Having the insight and the knowledge from two other building principals that are working in different buildings and different communities has given us noticings and wonderings about our daily practices that we just, we weren't seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I've really appreciated these conversations that have come from these walkthroughs. It has been wonderful to collaborate with two other uh, building principals that place the similar roles to what um, I play. I'm in my building alone. And so it's nice to have someone to be able to reach out to with very specific questions that I have regarding uh, what's going on in my building and my problem of practice. Um, this professional learning has been very direct, honest. Um, the feedback I've got have been from two gentlemen that are in similar buildings and have similar clientele as I do. And so I've been able to, um, it's, it's been open and honest and refreshing. So everything that I've gotten, I know is coming from um, a place of professionalism um, and also coming from two gentlemen that have similar experiences. So I can really trust what, what they're telling me and then I can take what they're telling me and put it, put it into direct action. And so uh, that's been the fun part is uh, seeing the fruit of the labors of not only myself, but also to, uh, to other professionals in the area validate some of the things that we were doing already, but it also has given me a ton of new ideas on how to work with my staff to improve that process in our school. I would recommend the leadership triad to any principal out there who is um, ready to learn and grow and build their network and just improve as an overall leader. I, I'm in year three of my principalship. And for me, that was perfect timing because it gave me the first two years um, to figure out all things principaling. And I was ready to um, really dive in and be more specific in the areas that I want to grow in. Um, but whether you are in year one, year five, or year 15, it will benefit you and it will be a fabulous experience. Okay, so let's see if I can. Welcome to the ESU 10 okay. Leadership Now. Okay, so um, again, we're looking at starting this in the fall. And so as far as time commitment goes, Really, this is a PLC for administrators for us to dig into data, find that problem of practice, and how, what steps can we take to improve that throughout the school year. And so we would begin with two days introduction and training. During this training, um, we'd be looking at data, finding that problem of practice. You'd have the opportunity to meet and start collaborating with your triad. Um, this would be done at ESU 8. We're still figuring out, um, there's a couple of other ESUs who are already doing this. And so whether they come and help facilitate this, we're working on those, but we're looking at the week of September 18th through 22nd. And I guess we're looking at either two days back to back or based on your guys' feedback, maybe a Monday and a Wednesday or a Tuesday and a Thursday. So you're not gone from school two days in a row. And so once um, we have some commitment, we can look at those dates and see what would work best for you guys. Um, and then you would do a half day in October, November, December, January, February, March. I know that seems a, like a lot, but if you think about it, um, two of those half days would be in your own building where the other principals from the triad would come to you. So let's say Jim, um, Kathy, and Frank were a triad. So in October, we might go to Jim and then in November for a half day. And then hopefully you have time to get back to your school in the afternoon. November, we'd go to Kathy. And December, we'd go to Frank. So again, you're going out to these schools for a half day. Hopefully, location-wise, we would be able to put you in groups and triads that you were able to get back to your school for the rest of the day. Um, 
During these half days, we look at that problem of practice for the school. We do observation or not observations because we don't want an evaluation, but we look at notices and wonderings throughout classrooms to check on that problem of practice. And then you um, debrief as a triad. And then at the end of in April, we could come back together and possibly just do this over Zoom, but debrief and see how was the process? What did it look like? And so our goal is really to get hopefully two triads started this next year. Um, again, there is a time commitment piece, but from what we've heard in those videos, it's been really worth it. And what I've seen and when I was in St. Paul, those three principals really enjoyed it and they've really built um, a ton of collaboration into those days. And so I do have a flyer that I will be sending out to you guys so you can think about it more and look at the purpose benefits and what it might look like. And then I just ask that you contact me if you, this is something you are interested in. And then once we have commitment from different principles, we can look at um, the triad groupings. Thank you, Claire. Yeah, we just, you know, um, based on your recommendations here, we knew this was happening. I think it's happening or a version of it in two, in seven, and in 10. So we kind of reached out um, and learned a little bit more about it. So um, if that's something that is interest um, to you, we would sure go forward with it. Um, same thing with the principal coaching. Um, I guess with that, um, you know, if you would prefer to go that round, just a little one-on-one, -on -one, maybe before or alongside of the facilitated rounds, we're sure happy to do that too. We just wanted to, um, we want to do the best we can for you guys. Anything on that? All right, Claire, we'll send that out to you and or to all the principals. Um, our topic this month was recruiting, hiring. Um, we heard Boyd County, Quentin said that he's still looking for business um, in sixth grade. How is it going for the rest of you as far as fill in your positions? Have you had a lot of applicants? <laughs> Kathy shaking her head no. We're done at O'Neill Elementary, but I know the high school's not. We have all but, but one SPED position filled, but like I said, I'm hoping to have that done by the end of the day today, and that's high school and elementary. So. Filling, uh, or not filling a, a position and then looking only half time on a position internally. So we should be good for next year, barring any other new openings. That's good to hear because NDE is a little scary right now, that website. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, some of your superintendents might have shared with you, we tried to do kind of a, a teacher fair in the Metro recruiting some of those people. And um, I was probably more disappointed than them, um, but we literally only had two people show up, you know, and, and uh, so I don't know if we didn't reach the right people. You know, we sent to colleges. It was in the Omaha paper. It was on the Nebraska Teach website. Um, so yeah, I I feel you. They were kind to me, but I felt like I <laughs> was kind of a letdown. Anybody doing anything unique trying to recruit? Um, are you primarily just advertising on the Nebraska Teach. Yeah. Using any and all connections we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really important. I know that, um, and I don't know about everybody's, but I know O'Neill has posted some and, and trying to get those um, local kids to come back. And um, you've had a little success in that at O'Neill. I've only because I've seen those. Other people might also, but I know I'm headed to Madison tomorrow to their um, junior and senior career fair. So I think the the more we can talk about it and get kids interested too. Um, sometimes it doesn't look like a very glamorous career though. So hopefully we can get over that. 
I think just always to um, being open to student teachers and inviting them in because we have four student teachers right now at Summerland and we just hired one of them. So, yeah. Yep. That's, that's a good way to get them in. We've tried that even with our school psychologists and speech to get them in their internship. Yeah. Anything else on recruiting and hiring? Um, last week I sent out, um, an email to the, to principals and superintendents about, um, completing our data dig survey, uh, virtually or an online version, because we just didn't have very many people signed up and we wanted to try and get everybody's perspective and input. And so we just ask that in the email, there was a little video intro that you could watch. Um, but we ask that you complete this survey about our services as an administrative team. Um, it could be uh, teacher leaders on your team, or it could just be your principals and your superintendents and whatever you define as that leadership team. But that helps us when we look at our services and plan for next year and making sure that we are um, providing what you guys need. And so we're gonna have to rethink about maybe what the time of year we do our data dig or how we do it. Maybe this is a good way, however I only have one so far. So I'm hoping that uh, we can get a few more of those surveys done. And I think we put next Friday as a due date on it, so. If you haven't done that or you haven't seen it, um, it's there. And if you need the video, um, I can resend that also. And then Katrina had put in here, I don't know if she's able, she was someplace where there was a lot of people. So I don't know if you want to add anything about the Perkins grant, Katrina. Uh, just quickly, um, it's open until April 5th. I uh, sent out a couple of emails and we've had three um, applicants from ESU 8 so far for Perkins. So just encouraging um, if you need your revision refresh report that uh, I sent out last year, if you don't have those handy and you need me to resend it, um, I can do that. But just encouraging your CTE teams to get together and prioritize um, what your needs are and encourage you to apply. And hopefully we'll get some legislative bills passed uh, that'll free up some more funding for next year or the year after. Thanks, Katrina. Any questions for her? All right, PD team, anybody else on have anything? What about administrators? Do you have anything you want to ask the group? Anything? I have a question, I guess. Does anyone... Um... Do any high school administrators limit like FCCLA things out of the building, FFA, FBLA? Um, we're getting to the point where we're just saturated with things that our kids are going to all the time, which is fine. But and I know that's a part of their education, but yet trying to balance the time in class versus the out of out of class time. Does anyone like have a number or do you just kind of manage that piece by piece? No number here, Quentin. As long as I can handle it, they can do it, I guess. We don't put a cap on it either at Neely. Uh, I'm not high school, but we don't put a cap on it at Summerlin either. Yeah, we're just kids gone here this week for state speech. Two days and then three days for FFA next week. So they'll be here five days in two weeks. Yeah, that's kind of what I was up against we're trying to value our time in the classroom but yet it's hard to say we need to value every moment of our time in the classroom and kids are out of the building so often in spring here it gets worse and so I didn't know if anyone was setting a number or anything like that so I thought I would I think that'd be tough to do Quentin I think you're right but I think it'd scare me if I wrote down how many how many minutes our kids are out of school right All right, thank you. Well, I really appreciate you guys taking your time out to uh, spend it with us. And um, I will 
send the recording out for everyone. And um, I hope you have a great week. Well, Thank thanks, you. Molly. See you guys.